I would like to discourse on the amazing connection between the five and the six and in geometry we call that pentahexa and um, from the Renaissance time there's an amazing artist by the name of Albrecht Dürer and Albrecht Dürer gave us this design here so this has been recorded in manuscripts and from this creation of the hexagon and the pentagon we're able to create the triangle the square pentagon hexagon so this is like the mother of all form and the reason why it's mother of all form is because we start off with two circles so I'm actually going to show you step by step how I created this so here we have um, a circle here so I'm literally going to this is circle number one I'll do that by hand in yellow in yellow so we've got one circle now we know that that's the center there so the next circle is going to touch this point. So when I draw the next circle to touch the center of the other, we have what's effectively called the vesica pisces. It means the bladder of the fish. And the bladder of the fish is this shape here. It's like um, the 3D form of this almond shape, that's called the mandola. The three-dimensional form of this, if these were two interpenetrating spheres, is the rugby ball. We're all kicking around this rugby ball. And the other thing I'm gonna show you is um, that this pentahexa is also the soccer ball. So the two balls that we're all kicking around in this world are all based on this mother of all form. So, so, so far, I'm going to draw this crossing here. So that's the vertical height and that's the short axis. So in sacred geometry, especially for mathematic mathematicians like myself, we love to analyze the relationship of that vertical height to the short axis. And what's coming up is to understand the crux of this diagram. This is the blueprint of all creation, the Vesica Pisces, and that creates the flower of life. So we all know that and love that. But I'm gonna put introduce the third circle. Now you would think that the third circle you would think that the third circle is going to be right at the center of the mandola. But if you look closely, I'm going to draw a circle that just goes a fraction off-center. And when we talk about off-centeredness, we're talking about the golden ratio. So I'm looking at this point here, and I'm going to draw my third circle that actually touches the short axis. So it's going to touch this point and that point. So I, I, draw, I draw my circle. So watch this. I'm going to create a new circle. So this is about a trinity, perhaps. This is insight into the three in the one, or the one in the three. So now we've got three circles, but the third circle went, we perhaps at the golden ratio. If, if this distance is point, if this is one, that's point five. Is this fraction of centeredness point six one eight? I'll reveal that in another upcoming lecture, because that's a critical point because this is creating all the magic that's coming. So now we've got three circles, and if so I already have got one side of my hexagon, one, two, I've also got w the intersection of these circles, uh, actually I'll do them in blue. We're gonna draw the hexagon in blue, one. So th these have been naturally created by the three circles, but by knowing that length, I can, I can create two more points here by arcs, by arcing with my compass. So you can see that here we've generated a hexagon and this, this, that generates the flower of life, the six around the one. We love the hexagon, it's um, snowflakes, it's the crystallization of water becomes ice. The word crystal literally means ice. So six is favorable for all things to do with crystals and the beehive the effective storage. This is the quartz crystal. When we look at quartz crystal, this six, the star tetrahedron is based on six faces of the cube, two interpenetrating tetrahedra. This stores all the knowledge of your computer, billions of bits of information. So the hex, the six, stores all this knowledge. Um, yes, and so we're going to talk more about the six later on, but we want to know how to construct the pentagon from the hexagon. So three circles generated this simple design of the six points. Now to get the pentagon I have to know that I have to know this point here. Without that point there um, I can't actually create the next points of my pentagon. So I'm going to place my ruler from this point here going through that mystical point and you can see that I've um, actually I'll, I'll go right through there. So we've got one, 
and we go right through that point. This is just very rough by the way. And just by doing that, I've got enough information now because of that critical point, I'm able now to draw in my pentagon. So I just want you to have a look at that and appreciate that, you know, from five, six hundred years ago, the masters of art Dura was around at the time, like um, Leonardo da Vinci and the masters, they studied sacred geometry. It was the underpinning of all creation. And from this, they would create their landscapes and the portraits. So um, what comes up is that we now have a fusion of the pentagon and the hexagon. And we're going to start off with this polarity of biology versus technology because I believe the five is the shape of all living proteins in the body and whereas in the six the crystals are hexagons the the hex structure of um, carbon seven so carbon seven is like a chicken wire they're all hexagon wires one atom that one atom thin creates this nanotech which allows us to go into the space age so we need the six to develop technology but what's important is how we align the technology with pure thought and intent because that the every thought we have based on the living mathematics of nature must be pure intent for the technology to work so we have to come to some resolution with the biology the fibonacci code versus the technology which is the binary code because the binary code is when we double one two four eight 16, 32, we go forever and that's rapid and quick and so the binary doubling sequence is great for technology and storing data but we have to obey a line with the Fibonacci sequence which is 1, 1, 2, 3, 5 because that's part of the human anatomy. So where, where the elbow bends, if this is one unit, the elbow doesn't bend at 0.5, at 0.618 we have the joint. So all human anatomy is based on the penta. And another thing about the five and the six that I enjoy is um, something that we're going through now in this, um, on the, t today is around the 18th of December, but in a couple of days we have our solstice on the 21st of the 12th, I'll write it down, 21st of the 12th, 2020, and we're a few days before this, but what's happening on the 21st of December is that Saturn and Jupiter are coming into alignment precisely to the very degree so what that means is that if I'm here on earth and I'm looking at the night sky when I look at Saturn and Jupiter they come together every 20 years right so what's happening is the alignment is so perfect it's called occulting so Jupiter is occulting Saturn which means that when we look at the two planets they actually look like one because they're exactly in alignment um, so that's that's happening on um, 21st of December and that hasn't happened that precisely for 800 years. We're going back into the medieval times. So this is a rare alignment about Saturn and Jupiter. Now Saturn, this is a symbol for Saturn. Sat Saturn and Jupiter, they, Saturn takes two years of 30 to make 60 years and Jupiter takes five lots of 12, five 12s of 60. So every 60 years Saturn and Jupiter come together and they're conjunct and then they're opposite, conjunct and they're opposite. And over 60 years, they make a five-pointed star when they're in conjunction. And when they're opposite each other, there's six points. See this hexagon here? If this is Saturn and Jupiter, they take 10 years to um, be um, conjunct like that, or sorry, in oppositions. So that, that forms a star of David. So that... The beautiful thing about Saturn and Jupiter, which is relevant to what we're going through on the world stage now, is that both the Pentagon and the Hexagon are being formed astronomically. So we're, we're kind of coming to this point where we need to synthesize and integrate all this knowledge. And that's what I've got here. I've got synthesis. Rather than seeing its biology versus technology, I'm showing you how the Dura diagram is inviting us to align with these energies so they're not in a duality, so that they're called a synthesizing. And one of the best shapes that synthesizes the, um, the penta and the hexa is, most of you know, this is a soccer ball shape. So we've all been kicking around this shape. And here it is again as a, um, a fluorescent. This hangs up in the night in your room and 
w when it's in darkness, it absorbs all the light. So there's 20 pentagons, uh, 12 pentagons and 20 hexagons. So the name for this soccer ball is that you put your finger on a vertex here and around that vertex we've got a 566. Six. So the numerological signature for this soccer ball is called 566. Six. Anywhere I touch a vertex, it's 566. Six. But as a, it's an Archimedean solid and its proper name is called a truncated icosahedron. So this is an icosahedron. So when we cut or truncate these vertices, we end up with the pentagon hexagon. Um, so the, the three-dimensional view of a pentagon is the dodecahedron, and the shadow of this also creates the hexagon. So the, the, the icosa dodeca are an important geometric series. They form um, an infinite series that goes into the micro-quantum and into the galactic, because they, they, um, when I stellate this dodeca, the pentagon, if I've got 12 stellated um, pentagon pyramids and join them, it makes a bigger icosa and from the icosa I stellate the 20 triangles and it makes a, a larger copy of this and it goes forever. So pentahexa represented by icosa dodeca is important. So what are, the main thing now is that it's not just the soccer ball, the fusion of pentahexagon creates the DNA molecule. So DNA in the double helix, this is the slice of the pentahexa. And we can see it, say, when we, um, um, in, when we look at DMT in the third eye. That this, so DMT naturally in the, in the third eye, which is released, it forms pentahexa molecules. So science is aligning with this geometry. Um, also here when we look at when the earth is cracking, the clay, it forms an... A, a representation of pentahexa. These are natural cracking formations. So the reason why we love all this is because the pentahexa, when it's created, makes not only just the five and the six, it makes the triangle here, it makes the square or the diamond. So this is the, the beginnings of sacred geometry, the three, the four, the five, and the six. So um, often I see it in bubbles, when you see bubbles fusing together. So pentahexa is not only about our DNA, it's about um, synth synthesizing all these opposing elements in our life so that we remain in coherence, focused, and pure intent.